Hey, good morning, guys. Barry Scarborough here, Watchman on the Wall for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, had to make this video because I'm super passionate about this, and this is something that I think the Lord has, has really shared and uncovered and unsealed uh, in, these, in these last days, and that is the fact that we, we will know the time of the rapture. And I want to give you scriptural references for why the church has historically been, I believe, incorrect in this situation. We will know the time. And scripture points us to that. And I'm going to give you three different books, three different scriptural references that I want you to study on and, and think on and pray about and then say to yourself, now wait a minute, if these are correct in the way that we're reading them, if they're in context, if we're seeing them right, and if we're reading Matthew 24, 35, and 36 right, then we will know the time of the rapture of the church. So this is, this is on the heels of the Robert Breaker video, which I thought he did a really nice job, by the way. I do think he missed in one really critical area, really critical area. I, I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know how people are missing this. Nobody wants to read verse 35. Nobody. Everybody. So Robert Breaker did a really nice job, and I'm going to share some of the things, although with additional emphasis on what he shared. I've done a video on this before, probably and you can see it on my channel, what, a year, year and a half ago, but I wanted to emphasize it again because it's just driving me bananas, guys. We have to read Scripture in context. So let's start with the most critical Scripture that everybody gets wrong, me included for 30 years. I got it wrong. I'll tell you that I got it wrong. I got it wrong because I didn't read it in context. Let's go there and get this out of the way, and then I want to give you three Scriptures that point to the fact that we will know the time. Why would the Lord want to keep us in, in the dark on something like this anyway? So, let's see here. Matthew 24, 35 and 36. Do not listen to people that only read 36. Okay? Interesting that it is, even in my Bible, it's bracketed out 36 to 39 with the subtitle Days of Noah, 35 has got to be read before this. So let's, well, we could end up reading back to 32, but let's start with 35. Heaven and earth will pass away. We know that's eventually going to happen, but my word shall not pass away. So in other words, this scripture, this word is truth and righteousness, and it's unchangeable. That, that, that has nothing to do with whether or not you know, a Bible is burned in a fire and blah, blah, blah. But quite frankly, most of them rarely are. So heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. What is Jesus talking about? He's not even, refer even referencing the rapture there, guys. He's not even referencing the rapture, which I I'm... and. Help me out, but I don't think Robert Breaker talked about this at all, which I'm again I'm shocked. It shows how mesmerized we are with this with this scripture and frankly getting it wrong. We're getting it wrong. What day is he talking about? He's talking about the day in verse 35 that heaven and earth will pass away. Heaven and earth don't pass away at the rapture. Heaven and earth don't pass away at the rapture. We're talking about the we're talking about Revelation 19, 20, 21. We're not talking about the rapture. When heaven and earth path pass away, we're talking about the, the judgment at the end of the millennial kingdom. When heaven and earth are done and, and we the elements in the earth will burn with intense heat. We're talking about the end of all time. Well, the end of all time comes after the millennial reign. This is where people get confused. They say, well, everybody knows the end of the millennial reign because it's a thousand years. What happens after the millennial reign? We're talking about the great white throne judgment. We know this from Revelation. And I would challenge you to, I'm not going to do it, but I challenge you to read Revelation 19, 20, 21, and 22 and read it over and over and over and over again. 
At the end of a thousand years, what happens? We have the final judgment where Satan and his minions and the false prophet and the Antichrist will be cast into the lake of fire. The lake of fire, which many people have said they, you know, they have ideas on where it might be and what it, you know, we, we don't know. It's a challenge. But that's all going to take time even beyond the thousand years. So what I believe this is very much alluding to, we know for certain it's alluding to heaven and earth passing away. But the reason we won't know that time is there will be time passing in the great white throne judgment. We don't know how long it's going to take. How do we know how long it's going to take for the Lord to judge the, the wicked dead, the evil dead, uh, great white throne judgment? We reign during the millennial, millennial kingdom for a thousand years, and then heaven and earth shall pass away. That's what this is referencing. This, Jesus is not referencing... He's referencing the end of the millennial kingdom and the great white throne judgment. We will have no idea. We will not know when that all comes to fruition. There's no day count. There's nothing in scripture. We don't know how long it's going to take. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour, no, no one knows. That's not at all a reference to rapture. Not at all. So you don't even have to get into the day and hour that no one knows being aligned to the Feast of Trumpets, which is a legitimate argument, I think. But clearly, matter of fact, I can categorically state that verse 36 is not talking about the rapture of the church. It's not. It's, it's not. It's talking about when heaven and earth pass away. Go to First and Second Peter talking about when heaven and earth will pass away from intense heat and fire because we won't be judged by flood will be judged by fire again. So that is so that has been misread by the church for how long? Hundreds of years, me included. It's it's not correct. It's flat out not correct. I'm going to read it again for emphasis. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. So scripture is here forever in our hearts in scripture. The word of God, Jesus is God incarnate and the word incarnate. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. So there you have it. You're not talking about the rapture. You're talking about the end of all things post-millennium. Heaven and earth do not pass away because during millennium, New Jerusalem is brought down to earth. The Lord makes the earth new again. Again, read Revelation 19, 20, 21. Revelation 20 in particular for the millennial kingdom. And then nothing happens to the earth until the very end of all time. Till the very end of all time. That's the time that 2436 is talking about. So we can't continue. No one can continue to claim that verse 36 is legitimate in terms of the discussion about the rapture. It's just, it's not. That, it's, that's not correct. It's not correct. So, then in turn, what do we look to to have confidence? We always look to Scripture, always, always, always. As I said, I was going to give you three Scripture references and three authors, all, of course, divinely inspired, that tell us that we will know the time of God's return. I know, I know how heretical this is in the modern church. Don't really care. Again, does not really matter to me. I'm not concerned about what men think. I'm concerned about what scripture tells me. That's the only thing in life that concerns me. It's what scripture says to me. So let's let's look at it. I'm actually going to give you a four verses just to make the case more significant. Revelation was written by the by John the Apostle. Jesus literally in visions and dreams gave him the words to write. But let's look at Revelation 16, 15. Behold, I am coming like a thief. Well, who is he coming like a thief to? The non-believers. Listen to this. Blessed is the one who stays awake and keeps his garments lest he walk about naked and men see his shame. So People in, in verse 15 are ready for his return. Ready for his return. Revelation 3, 3, which I've been talking about for years. You, you can't get around Revelation 3, 3. 
This is Jesus speaking to the church at Sardis. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. What have we received and heard? We've received the gospel. We've heard the gospel. Keep it. Keep my commandments and repent. If therefore you will not wake up, I will come like a thief. And you will not know at what hour I will come to you. Hour is very specific. Very specific. Let me read it again. Remember therefore what you have received and heard and keep it. And repent. If therefore you will not wake up, I will come like a thief. And you will not know at what hour I will come upon you. What's the inverse of that as I've said many times? The inverse of this scripture if you will wake up, I will not come like a thief, and you will know at what hour I will come upon you. That's us. We're awake. We are awake. We are awake. We are the Philadelphia Church. We're awake, and we're seeing these things happen. We're aware. I'm going to read it a third time, just for emphasis. Revelation 3, verse 3. I don't think that's a coincidence either. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. What have we received and heard? The gospel. What did Sardis receive and hear from Paul? The gospel. Keep it. Keep the gospel. Share the gospel. Repent. So those that have not believed it and heard it, repent and turn from your ways and accept Christ. If therefore you will not wake up, so also wake up to the times, I will come like a thief. And you will not know at what hour I will come upon you. That's crystal clear. That's crystal clear. I mean, I, you know, I don't even really need to give the others. But anyways, I will. I'll keep giving them to make the case stronger. It's, it's crystal clear, guys. There's no question here. Let's go to Hebrews. So Hebrews, so who wrote Hebrews? Uh, many scholars would say only God knows who wrote Hebrews. Okay, so we have another author. Some people think Paul, I don't think it fits the writings of Paul. Some, Apollo, Silas, Achilla, and Priscilla, maybe even Clement of Rome. So none of those are the same as John the Apostle. So I'm giving you a different author. I don't think it's Paul. I don't think there's, there's any way it's Paul. But let's go to Hebrews 10.25. My brother Jim Davis just sent a note on this, and I agree with you completely, Jim. Not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. The note here just talks about the assembling together. It doesn't talk about how can you, how can you see the day drawing near if you don't know what the day is. So this is, you know, Silas... Okay, this is Clement of Rome, whoever wrote Hebrews. We know it's God-breathed. It's in the canon. Let me read it again. Not forsake our own assembling together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. So we're talking about the author of Hebrews, John the Apostle and Jesus himself in Revelation, telling us multiple times already that we will be we will be aware of the day. I can, we can keep going. How long do we want to do this? <laughs> How much time do we have? 1 Thessalonians, so now we're a letter of Paul to Thessalonica, now as to the times and the epochs or the seasons, brethren, you have no need of anything to be written to you. You're going to know the times and the seasons. Peace and safety, the destruction will come upon them suddenly like birth pangs upon a woman with child. So there's even a reference here then to the Revelation 12 sign. And verse 4, perhaps the most important, but you, brethren, are not in darkness that the day should overtake you like a thief. For you are all sons of light and sons of day. And you can go ahead and read on. 1 Thessalonians 5 says we'll know the day. Hebrews 10.25 says we'll know the day. Revelation 16.15 says we'll be awake and know the day. Revelation 3.3 3 says that we'll know the hour. What do we, brothers and sisters, what do we do with this? What do we do with these scriptures? Tell me. Help me. Help me out. Help me out. What do we... What do we do with these scriptures? I don't know what to do with these scriptures. If 
they all say that we will know. So Jesus himself says in Revelation 3, verse 3, to the church at Sardis, that we will know. Jesus himself says through the Apostle John in Revelation 16, 15, that we will know. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 through 8, or 1 through 9, we will know. Hebrews, so whoever wrote Hebrews... <laughs> Clement of Rome or Silas or, you know, Barnabas says that we will know, we, will, we can encourage one another as we see the day. Okay, this is, there's no way around this, and we just put it in clear, clear context that Matthew 24, 36 has been misread for hundreds of years. You think Satan's pleased about that? Of course he is. He wants us to mistake that. That is not referencing, Jesus is not referencing the rapture there. He's referencing the end of heaven and earth itself. Well, we don't get, heaven and earth is not going away, quite frankly, anytime soon. Because we know we have the tribulation and the millennium before us. So at the very least, heaven and earth have a thousand seven more years left, at a minimum. Have to, by definition. So heaven and earth are not going anywhere. Now, they're going to get a lot better when the millennial kingdom and when the Lord renews heaven and earth by his power for us to reign in the millennium. But it's not going anywhere. So this, I'm just, I'll tell you what kind of blows my mind, and I love Robert Breaker, but I'm just amazed he didn't reference verse 35. I think that shows how, how incredibly institutionalized this thought of nobody knowing has become. He, he, he makes it really clear. We just share, it's crystal clear that 35 and 36 are about the end of heaven and earth itself. Not the rapture. So that reference is not, so that reference of all time can be put away, put out of your mind, put down. It may, it's, it's not even correct the way it's so often referenced, period. Period. I mean, there's no... Okay, I'm not being overly dogmatic here. I'm just showing you what Scripture says. That's not a correct interpretation. Period. There's no way. So then I give you Hebrews 10.25, Revelation 16.15, Revelation 3.3, 3, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, all saying that we will know the day when we're awake, and we'll even know the very hour, says Revelation 3.3. 3. Ooh, that's getting pretty specific. The hour? What do you mean, know the hour? How would you know the hour? I'm just giving you what Scripture says, guys. You guys take it before the Lord. I'm giving you what Scripture says. So if we believe that it's going to be this Feast of Trumpets because of the Tetrad of Blood Moons 2014-2015, that were two years prior, because of the 726 days, which which Strong's Concordance says is Harpazzo, from September 28th, the final blood moon, to September 23rd of this year, because of the, the solar eclipse on August 21st, the lunar eclipse on August 7th, fulfilling Acts 2.20, because of <clears throat> 33 days, the life of Christ, the years of Christ's life and, and walk, from August 21st to September 23rd because of the UN International Day of Peace on September Peace and Safety on September 21st which is referenced in 1 Thessalonians 5 1 to 5 <clears throat> because of September 21 to 23rd being the feast of trumpets and the time and season where no man knows of the day or the hour and also being trumpets the last trump etc I mean how many could we is it crazy how we could go on and on because of it being 500 years after the Protestant Reformation in 1517, because of it being 120 years after the first Zionist Congress, because of it being 100 years after the Balfour Declaration, because of it being 50 years after the reunification of Jerusalem, 1967, the Six-Day War, because of it being... 70 years since November 29th, 1947, when Jerusalem was first regathered. And yes, that is the date. May, it was official May 14th, or May 1948. 
November 29th, 1947 is when the decree first went forth. So this fall is huge. I can't get around what scripture tells me in those four verses across three books, three books, three authors, John and Jesus himself, Paul, and then Barnabas, Silas, or whoever wrote Hebrews. Three books, three authors, three different time frames, all telling us that we'll know, and one verse in Matthew that has been read wrong from the words of Christ himself that's just incorrectly interpreted for hundreds of years. So, Scripture interprets Scripture, and I'll take four verses and a misinterpretation of one as crystal clear that we're going to know. So then, put that together with all the things that are before you, brother and sister, and what is coming. What is coming? Well, I'll tell you one thing with total certainty. Something big. <laughs> something big. Because we're human, we can, of course, be off. That's that 5%. But boy, I don't even know if it's really holding on to 5% that much at this time. The more these big-time ministers come against it, the more credence I think it holds. Because we knew the scoffers and mockers would come. We even were told that. We were even, Peter even says that that would happen. What else could he possibly do to tell us of his coming? I, it's, I don't know. I'm, I'm literally amazed at the power and might of the prophetic nature of what the Lord has shared with us. I'm just... I'm blown away. So let's look together. Let's see. Second Peter. Peter wrote Second Peter. That's pretty easy to remember. Know this, first of all, that in the last days, mockers will come with their mocking, following after their own lusts. Hmm, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? And saying, where's the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all continues just as it was from the beginning of creation. It's the same thing. No big deal. No big deal. It's just people spouting off. They're crazy. They're nuts. For when they maintain this, it escapes their notice that by the word of God, the heavens existed long ago, and the earth was formed out of water and by water, through which the world at that time was destroyed, being flooded with water. But the present heavens and earth by his word are being reserved for fire. Remember I told you that will be the end of all time. Kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. He's talking about the judgment, the great white throne judgment of the evil dead. That's the day, 2 Peter 3, 7, that Jesus references 80 years prior. That's the day that no one knows the day or the hour of, not the rapture. So we even knew the mockers would come. We even knew when we presented all this that people would go, now nah, this is no, you know, no. Let's read that again. Where's the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all continues just as it was from the beginning of creation. For when they maintain this, it escapes their notice by the word of God the heavens existed long ago. What is he referencing? He's referencing the flood judgment on Noah. So he's linking it to the days of Noah, just as Jesus did in Matthew 24. <laughs> so he's saying they're going to mock and scoff, just like they did in Noah's time, and say, nah, this is just, yeah, that sign's no big deal. It's not even really a sign. It's happened 84 times, or whatever the clowns are saying. No, it hasn't. No, it has not. Nope. It has not. This is a significant wake-you-up kind of sign. Could the Lord be using a wake us up to something else? Yeah, but I'll tell you what. You know where you know where I stand, guys. That it's talking about Harpazzo right in that in that in that area. Really, really significant. Really, really significant. 